Hey everyone, the lighting is not that bad, huh? My camera light's only on 4%, this is 100%, but I know 100% I'll probably kill it in like 30 minutes and I don't know how long we're going to be out there, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit, we'll leave it right around there, 14%. So we're going to go out into the woods tonight and see what we got. I thought tonight would be a very good night for me to do a walking around vlog. Right now it's very misty and drizzly, and I'm hoping that walking around in the woods tonight we can maybe find some salamanders, and I'm going to bring you guys along. Nights like this we always find salamanders. Tonight we had torrential rain. On and off, never really any flooding, but the creeks are stronger. I'm going to bring you to a couple creeks around here. Um, here's the one with the miniature dam we rebuilt. Take a look at this. This is the first big flood since I rebuilt the dam looking more naturally. And I put that big discharge there. I like how it looks kind of industrial. But look at the big whirlpool it's got right there. See that? Awesome. You see how the water's all discolored and sediment in it? That is from the dirt logging roads up here. Now, this thing here, it goes up only a, maybe a couple hundred yards before it's non-existent, but it does cross one road, which has a bunch of drainage ditches. It's a dirt road. So, I'm going to take you guys for a little walk into the forest, and we'll look for salamanders, and we'll also go ahead and visit a second stream, which is in a opposite direction. So... The stream we're going to go visit, the bigger stream, is not on my property, but I am allowed to go there. So, behind me is a logging forest. On the other side of me is a property that is owned by the state, which is a bunch of marshes. Wow, look at this. They all filled up with water, the pools underneath these uprooted trees. And the other side of me is another neighbor who owns a couple hundred acres. He doesn't mind if I'm on his property, but that's not the direction we're gonna be going to today. You see these big stumps? These may be remnants from back when it was a logging forest. My property hasn't been a logging forest since the 70s. This is a very thick, stupid area that I'm going through right now. I don't know why I decided to go through here. I'm getting kind of wet. Just looking for creatures that only come out in this type of weather. I'm so happy that we've been getting a lot of rain this week. Because, ooh, a maple tree fell over. That's great firewood. I should make a little trail and take all this out. So... The past couple years have been drier than normal, and this far north you need cool, wet summers to support the trees that grow up here. They have very shallow root systems and they can't take drought. And that's why the past couple years there's been mass dieouts of the balsam fir trees. This weather is very beneficial. It's supposed to be wet and rainy in this climate. I'm just trying to connect with one of my trails, which is somewhere. Yep, I'm on it. So we should be there in less than 15 minutes, but the other stream in the time being, we'll just see what we may come across. I do not have my boots on today, but these are already soaked and I can walk through puddles and whatever. This colder weather, which is like 50 degrees all week long is a very welcome sign. And also, it's kind of chilly. Uh, mosquitoes don't like it, which is a very beneficial thing. Having mosquitoes is horrible. So this trail just goes along my property boundary. I was able to get all these really cool signs like this. They're nice and fluorescent. So 
So this trail I have here just goes on the perimeter of the property pretty much. Nice and quiet out. Usually when you guys hear videos that I make around here, you can just hear the blaring highway. Nope, it's about midnight. Now we're going back into this section of the property, which is the wildlife refuge. I got it registered as that, which is a two acre area of the property. Just gonna leave it as forest to try to attract animals and stuff. This is a pretty tight area of the trail. I might have to do some trimming. I don't use it very often. But we're about to trigger a trail camera going up through here. Yeah, right there you can see, I personally can't see that with my naked eye, but the camera's picking up on the infrared pretty well. Broken tree right there. Going by some log piles. I've never come across anything scary out here at night. Usually the animals are long gone when they hear me coming. But it's a good thing to come out here with the camera and just keep talking. My voice will probably scare anything away before I come across it. Or, um, I've never really liked bear bells. You know, you wear it on your belt so you don't sneak up on a bear. I never really liked those because I've always had the fear bells might attract other things. We have a moth that's following me because of the camera light. Oh, that'll be way better for you guys to see now that I'm just going to leave my headlamp on. Look at this. I love seeing all this growth on the pine trees. That was weird. Last year it made me kind of sad because of the drought. A lot of the pine trees started budding and they only like half grew and all the new growth just died. And then a bunch of the trees just started dying out. But this, this weather is awesome. Look, all the moss is starting to green up out here. Yep, so these uh, ribbons on the trees are my property boundary. We're about to leave this property right now. And just head off into the woods pretty blindly. But I have a decent sense of direction. I shouldn't get lost out here. You know, walking around in the forest sometimes alone at night can be kind of scary. But when I'm with someone, it takes most of the fear away. And for some reason, having a camera with me makes it less scary also. I like it's kind of getting kind of foggy out here. Look at all this. Very squishy. I love how the water table's coming up. Most of the area around me is all swampland, and that's why you got all this beautiful moss. Most of this moss turned brown for the past uh, more than two years. We haven't been getting the proper rain. I hope this year keeps being rainy. It's been very rainy. And other than a couple random days, we've been cold, more normal. I love it. And this upcoming weekend, I was planning on flushing out the big frog pond, which I take the hose from the basement and stick it in the drain line. I have a gravity line I installed that last year for peace of mind to eliminate my sump pumps. I had enough elevation on the house for coming down from the hill. I got a spider web, but I don't think I have to flush it because of all this rain. It's been drizzling all week, keeping it nice and wet, which is beneficial. The sun hasn't been coming out, so the trees have been able to absorb it quite well. And, um, yeah, today for the first time we got considerable rain. We got, I'd say, at least two inches. And we got a little spider friend right there. It's going to go under his web. And, yeah, I think the drain line is going to start working and that'll flush out the pond itself. 
Once the drain line starts running from the water table becoming higher than the basement floor, that will probably run for the next two weeks now. So those tadpoles are going to have a constant flow of water running through that pond. Look at all this tree damage. This is probably from the same storm that caused a almost half acre blowdown on my property, which I'm still trying to manage. Wow. Look at that big mushroom. That's kind of cool. There's a big tree right here that's down. You hear that water trickling? This is the bigger stream. I don't come over here often, so I don't know how it reacts. The little stream near my yard with the dam, it reacts very quickly to when it rains out. It rises and falls very quickly. If we don't get another downpour, it is going to... It'll be back to normal by morning, probably in a few hours. But you hear that water trickling? The stream sounds like it's going pretty well. This stream is much bigger than the other one I showed you at the beginning of the video. Here's more uprooted trees everywhere. Just trying to find a good way down. So this stream I had a trail camera set up last year. I put a mineral block, salt block, hoping it would attract animals. That has never worked one bit. Animals don't seem to be interested in salt. Got more mud here. Got some deer tracks. Now, we're about to head into a swamp with a bunch of water, and we're going to look very closely and hope to find some creatures. Yeah, you see, this stream acts very different than my stream. This one is not even close to being at capacity. There's still lots of river edge. Yep. Not even close. In this flat area right here, is where I had my trail camera set up last year. Let's see if we can find the salt block at all. Because I left it out here for the animals to lick it. Let's see if it completely deteriorated in the rain or not. Um, I think it's a little bit further up the stream. Um, I'm trying to keep the lights straight at the same time. Tripod's kind of making my back hurt. The way I'm holding it. Yeah, look at all that sediment up here where I'm shining the light. This river does get considerably higher. Oh, here it is. Look at it. That's kind of cool how it decayed. Look at that. That's a mineral slash salt block. That thing was big and very heavy to lug out into the woods when I brought it here. Put a trail camera here for like half a year. Nothing ever came to it. But it's really cool all the rain just kind of carved it out like that so we're gonna cross now that's kind of cool right here how the water's going under and back out I like that I hear some frogs in the distance spring peepers it sounds like wow look see all the debris up here this thing has flooded tons before All right, so if we follow this river down, it becomes a much more marshy area. A place where we see moose tracks pretty often. There are not as many moose here as there used to be. I think the warmer weather is pushing them further north. Their population's been going down for a while. They took down all the moose crossing signs near my house about two years ago. When I came up here, they had a pretty good amount of them. Took them all down, and what is this? Is, it, is that like a teapot? What's this doing out here? It's metal, look at it. Oh my gosh, I thought that was a design. That is so cool how the ceramic is falling off the, the rusty teapot. That is cool looking. Metal teapot, it's got like a ceramic finish it looks like. So this area, every tree you're seeing, is no older than the 1970s. It was all clear cut. Almost all of it. I have one white pine tree 
Well, I had like three, but two of them fell over in storms. They're so big. I doubt they grew since the 70s. Usually lumber trees take like 70 years to get big enough where they start cutting them. Got a duck. There's lots of tree damage out here. Look at all this stuff. I want to get back near the stream because the stream is where I really know where I am. Is that woodpeckers doing that to this tree? Yep, woodpeckers. Getting maybe ants, grubs. Looking for a good way to get through without knocking too much water down onto me. Going through a spider web. Spiders don't really scare me. Spiders rarely bite you. It's usually when they get pushed against you when they will bite. They'll try to avoid you though at all cost. Right now I'm just coming through here. Trying to find the marshy area. I haven't been out here in like a month so who knows what how the growth could be right now. Especially with all the rain. There's a lot of damage from trees. They all uprooted because we had a windstorm right... Oh, frog? Something moved? No? I'm just trying to move us to a area with a bunch of water. Because usually there's a swampy area where there's salamanders and stuff walking around. What do I got for battery? 65%, pretty good. I left the house with 72. I sat around for like the past hour waiting for us to charge up. All right. Um, I will have to check myself for ticks, but the ticks have been down on the decline in the past week. I'm so glad there's no mosquitoes. You know, if I was out here and it was like 80 degrees, one of those really horrible humid nights, they'd be going nuts. But they don't like this kind of weather when it's cool like this. Here we are again. Look at the stream. It's very dense. I think I'm going to cross. Yeah, I think I'm going to cross the river. It's a pretty deep area here, but I'm already soaked. I don't really care. This slower area, just looking around with my light, you could possibly see salamanders. We got a spider friend right here hanging from that branch. You just heard one car go by on the highway. I think that might be the first one we heard all night. Um, it's very dense. I usually only come out here in the spring when it's not grown in yet. When the frogs are very active. It's getting misty out. And with my headlamp, it's actually kind of hard to see in front of me with the mist that I'm producing from my own breath. Oop. So you got these pools right here of water. Sometimes there'll be just random salamanders in there. Oh, this looks like a marshy area. At least I know what side of the stream I'm on. Oh, we're are we crossing the stream again? Doesn't look like enough water. Is it like only half of the stream? Did it split for a little bit? Yeah, it split. I see the rest of it flowing up here. Oh, dropping a lot of rain down on me. Yep, look at this. The river just split. It's split. Um, just looking around for animal tracks. This looks like a through way from some type of animal coming through here consistently. Maybe a moose or the bear. Got a slug right here. Oh, look, we got a big bog. Look at all this water just sitting here. 
Maybe we'll see something cool up there. Um, yeah, look at this water sitting here. Awesome. This is where we saw so many mating frogs and egg sacs. This doesn't usually dry up at all. So I'm, look, oh look, there's still egg sacs right there. Did those frog eggs just die? Let's take a look. Do we see any tadpoles? Those might be salamander eggs. I had salamanders lay eggs in my ponds, but they I think they died. They don't seem to be developing or anything. They don't seem to have a very good success rate. 55 gallon barrel. Very rusty, look at that. It's got a spigot right there. Yeah. looking in the water I'll have to make a video like this in the spring when mating seasons going on there's usually so many frogs here and salamanders I'm hoping to find at least something to show you guys all right let's go across it's getting a little deep on this side and water like this who knows there could be leeches in here Probably should have brought the boots or the big high boots. But I've been going around all day just in sneakers. Got a little more spiders, a couple of them there. It's going to be probably impossible to go through here without getting some of them on me. But like I said, even if they hitch a rod, they're not likely to bite. Wow, this grass is so high. This was all dead and died back when I was out here, whenever that was, like a month ago or so, collecting the tadpoles from pools I knew would dry up. Mainly the drainage ditch. We didn't take really anything from out here. Those were all right next to the highway. Yeah, it's like a nice little area. Something's keeping this open and not growing trees. Whether it be moose or deer grazing or laying down out here. Look at this against me. This is pretty deep. I'll definitely have to check for ticks. But when it's rainy like this, I've never actually got one on me. So on post 10, I uploaded a series of short videos about two weeks ago, titled Salamanders and Frogs. It's the same exact swamp. Got another piece of metal right there. There is debris always left behind in logging forest. They leave things behind. Now this right here, I've been here before. I don't know what exactly it is, but see, we got this concrete trough right here. Maybe it's an old foundation. But there's always like a very slow trickle of water in it with erosion evidence that sometimes it flows more rapidly. Yeah. Bummer, I'm not really seeing any creatures. It's not their time of year. Hmm. This is obviously like some kind of foundation, I'm thinking. Here comes another car on the highway. We're pretty close to the highway now. Can you even see their headlight? Yeah. That guy's driving pretty slow. People drive slower on the highway at night because you never know what kind of animal could be there. And it's harder to see on a rainy night like this. Yeah, I'm probably just going to... Instead of finding my way back the way I came, when I'm done, I'm probably just going to walk on the grassy area next to the highway just to get back. So, let's see if we can find more swamp. This isn't deep mud, is it? It is kind of muddy that I don't want to walk through it. But I don't think I'd sink like a, down to my waist or anything. Mm. All right. 
You know, sometimes I think it's kind of sad having all these marshes and stuff in my property where I'm having all these animals. It makes me sad that it's next to the highway, you know, because all these frogs are going to wander across the highway at some point. Got moose and things crossing, although I've, I've only ever seen one animal hit by a car, ever. It was a coyote, like uh, not too long ago. Got hit by a car and you heard this large yelp and a vehicle slammed their brakes on. And the coyote was not found, but it probably died. I know it was a coyote because its skin and fur was ripped off against the asphalt when I went out there to look at it, look at what had happened. It was able to run away, but after that, I think, I don't think, probably didn't get that far if it got hit that hard. Uh, I'm dry, going right over all this stuff. More down trees. This tree was already dead before it fell, but it fell pretty recent. It was. It's definitely been down for at least a year because you see the dead grass that died over the top of it. I remember a while back I found a tank out here that I thought about bringing back to the house. One time out here I found this heavy metal garbage can from 1919 and I'm using that now at the house after all those years didn't even rust through it's so heavy duty I'm using it now for bark scraps from cutting firewood small pieces and debris see more water here it's a very tight squeeze underneath these plants I only have like two feet of headroom I'm just getting my head underneath and letting it slide over my back we have more water sitting here. Any creatures? Got all these pools of water that I can, I'm looking around at them and by the evidence, they're not supposed to dry up, but most of them did dry up last year during the drought. Hoping not a repeat of that, but this year is already off to a nice wet start. Beautiful green moss out here see a mosquito there but when it's this cold they're not really interested in blood it seems just using my headlamp looking around in the water for anything that might be moving this looks like a place that leeches would be like northern bloodsuckers never actually got a I've never had a wild leech on me never looking around in the swampiness it's very still there's no wind or anything so my breath is like lingering in front of my headlamp and making it difficult for me to even see it's a lot of more egg masses which I think are the salamanders oh there's a lot of tadpoles too around in there and they're pretty big in size they're getting food they're about as big as mine you know my metal pool that I have in the yard I thought about shutting it down because the metal pool has been proven. Animals attack the pet tadpoles because they can see in there easier. It's not like a black tub like all the other ponds I have. Or you can call them nurseries, whatever. Oh, this is like floating on gas. This whole area of land is just moving around and really stinky. I just release bubbles. Yeah, so... I'm definitely not moving those tadpoles into the other pond. Whoa, this is all, look at this. Moss is just floating. Uh, yeah, cause, because they're smaller and less developed in that one pond because of the conditions of the area, the other frogs will eat them because the others will definitely turn into frogs sooner. Another area of blown down trees. I'm talking enough and making enough noise. We shouldn't come across any creatures. What is this light? What am I seeing? It looks like I have a low and high beam. You see that? What am I doing? It's weird. I never noticed that before. My headlamp has like two beams. Why? 
Why does it look like it has two beams? This is not my usual headlamp, but these rechargeable headlamps are awesome. I can't believe it. They last hours on high walking around in the woods. And you know what's awesome about these? They don't just go dead and strandy out in the woods at once. They start dimming, then they'll shut off. But even after they shut off from dead battery, you hit the button and it turns back on for like 30 seconds. And you can do that quite a few times to get you back. But I always come out with a backup. I got my phone. I have a big camera light in front on top of the tripod. And yeah, I got three different uh, sources of light. Is this... We didn't come to this pool yet, right? I'm not making circles or anything. Still think I have my mental bearings of where I am. Definitely the next car that goes by will confirm exactly where I am. And I'll start heading back in that direction. And I'm sorry we didn't get to see anything other than spiders, tadpoles, and a slug. Usually there's more creatures out. Well, during the spring at least. This is a more dense area. But I can tell by the way the branches are broken and stuff. Something walks through here. This is something's trail. Just like a beer bottle, wine, yeah, probably a beer bottle from back in the day. It's got like a decade of debris building up around it. What's this hole? There's a hole right here. All right, so he from here to here, if you can't see the elevation, there's like a two foot dip, and in the middle of it, there's a hole. I want to grab a stick. I want to grab a stick. You saw those foundations we saw not too far back. Who knows, this might be an open septic tank. Let's see how deep this goes. After all these years, it's not gonna be nasty poop water or anything, but still, look at this. Oh my gosh. And there's like loose sludge at the bottom. I think we found a septic tank. Wow, this is up to my chest. Yeah, that makes sense. Someone dug it out to get to the cap to empty it and took the cap off. And now it's like a mosquito breeding ground. Mosquitoes keep landing and they got so much water in there. Wow. We found a septic tank. I'm pretty sure that's probably a septic tank from whatever building could have been out here back in the day. I've never come across this before. But you see, I was just walking here. And if you can see with the land, down about two feet, they probably dug to get to the cap. And I just stuck a stick down there. So that means this whole area here, assuming most septic tanks are a thousand gallons and made of concrete. Yeah. Yep. I think we had a septic tank. Um, so, I, I, I love the concrete ones. I don't know why people cheap out on the plastic ones. The difference is not that big. When I was out pricing septic tanks, thinking I may have needed one back at that time, the concrete ones were like three grand, while the other ones were like two grand. But the concrete ones will probably last the rest of your life, while the concrete ones have like a 20 year life expectancy. Really, you wanna be replacing a septic field that often? My septic field's original. That's why I had fears of it possibly not working. This is dense, I gotta plow. Uh, yeah. Most septic fields these days, I was told by my septic company, aren't like mine anymore. Most people cheap out, and I forget what it's called. They have an area for a leach field that just kind of floods and water can seep down. Mine is like a gravel, whatever you call it, leach field. I forget what the name of it is, but they're highly reliable and they almost never break down. But most people don't do them anymore because they're... That type of leach field is expensive to install and it takes a lot of area of your yard that you can't do anything with. Can't drive over it, can't tread over it. You, you can walk on it, you're not gonna damage it. What I meant is you can't have like a farm animal, a goat or a horse 
risk walking on it all the time because you'll you'll interrupt the pipes layout. You also sh shouldn't be riding heavy lawn tractors over it. What the heck? That's pretty fresh. Who was out here walking? Whole cup of cigarette butts. Those are pretty fresh. They barely biodegraded or anything. Maybe somebody... Like, this cup is so degraded compared to the butts. The butts look almost pretty fresh, just like rained on. What do you guys think? Or are those just the filter parts that don't biodegrade? I don't know. Maybe someone threw it out their window and some animal dragged it here from the highway? Yeah, now that we're getting close to the highway, you're going to start seeing more debris from a-holes. Look at this. More trash as we approach the highway. You know, one time I did a cleanup and I got so many bags of trash, but thankfully... Oh, I can see a reflector over there. We're very close to the highway. Yeah, makes sense why there's so much trash. Anyways, I did a cleanup, got quite a few bags... Two weeks later, it looked like I did nothing. But thankfully, we have a nice DOT that comes out with bags and cleans it up every year, whatever they can find. This is a pretty grassy area. This, this might be a section that they even start mowing. I think I'm going to end the video here, everyone. My goal is to try to find some creatures, but it didn't really happen. I'm just going to head right back out. The highway's got like 100 feet of mowed area, and I have a trail where I can get right back. Thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great night. Yeah, I'm going to go right back out where I could see that reflector.